I thought about um, fucking um, our capstone, our capstone English courses, which are very similar to um, those you just heard about. You know, and teaching very specific uh, project writing and all presentation skills. But then I decided not. Okay, and uh, but I, I think that you have done a great job and. Um, we encounter very similar problems, you know, and students always saying that uh, you are not um, a mathematician, and I don't really think that you can understand our project, and it would be worse that you are grading our project. So sometimes you know, we see very harsh comments like that, you know, break your heart. And um, so we, we're, we're, teach, we're having, we, we still have those courses, you know, teaching students to write final year projects, you know, with math, mathematics, and physics, um, life science, environmental science students. And over the years, we, we have a lot of positive comments, and we are learning so much about the disciplines, as I said. And we, but then the negative comments stay, because it's true that we are, we don't have the academic, the deep uh, or intense academic background of that of those disciplines. So, about two years ago, and um, me and senior management had several meet, very serious meetings with um, dean of uh, science, school of science of Hong Kong UST, wanting to solve the problems. Okay, and the, w one of the reasons that why the meetings were imminent and because that the capstone project and final year projects come in very innovative forms that it would make it impossible for us to have one course teaching students sitting there your so-called capstone project in 12 weeks okay so now in at Hong Kong you see they even include internship programs at the capstone Okay, the, that means before they come to our course, the previous summer they already finished the internship program, submitted the report, got the grade. And because of the curriculum part, they still have to, they are forced to come here to sit and then the, they will hate us from the very first minute. Yes. And department, um, um, dean of School of Science realized that and also everybody realize that, so we had to solve the problem. So we want to replace all those very specific uh, EASP, EAS courses with something that might um, have, create a deeper impact to every single senior science student. Okay, this is the challenge. Okay, so I'm going to present the, uh, the strategies. So the challenge is huge, okay, because that First of all, and then uh, if the, so, the outcome of the challenge is that we're replacing all current courses, which has happened. Okay, which has started to happen this semester. We're having five new courses, and then uh, um, we, we offer three new courses this semester, and now we are into week seven. So we are in the water <laughs> swimming. Okay, and then. Um, swimming to the other shore. Um, things work very well so far. <laughs> okay, now so I, I just said that so I, um, I'm dealing with this, okay, the department based course, replacing very specific capstone project course, English courses to something else. Okay, um, um, because of the curriculum path that by Hong Kong UST CLE, it has to be subject specific and we want to teach academic literacy rather than communication skills. And because the fact that we only have physics students taking the year three or year four course, so it has to be discipline specific and we want very much, no matter what kind of curriculum or courses, uh, I personally uh, agree and I think my team agree that we want to teach very much the academic literacy of the um, related to the subject like physics and maths okay so this is the um, thing that we will not remove and we did not remove okay now so this is the thing so we eventually we had 
numerous meetings so you starting two years ago with senior management of School of Science and also senior management of the um, DLE. And we decided to have something um, innovative, science communication. I, I think, I think in Hong Kong, and then we are the only institution teaching science communication to senior university students. Now, science communication, and of course can come up with different definitions, but in general, it means you communicate your very specific science knowledge of it from um, someone who knows the subject very well to lay audiences. And very often lay audiences are educated people, okay, because the secondary school student you know, will not want to read something about um, gravitational uh, waves and that sort of thing. And so, um, um, according to School of Science, and this is something very, very important, and they want the student to be able to master very much over the years. And then they were, according to them, they said that they are very happy that that, um, that we could have a chance to come together. And then so they were trying to persuade us that they want the student to be able to talk about the subject matters to everybody else in the future jobs. Okay, and because that what they have, what the kind of feedback that they heard from um, employers and other people, different walks of people is that, and then your student from Hong Kong University are very sharp, but then they walk, they can't communicate. We never understand what they're saying, not even in the job interviews. So even at the job interviews, some of our students failed, and because that they are too bright, talking about the insiders, using insiders language to communicate. So, so they that can you and your team, okay, and create a series of courses for our science students and um, so that um, we don't really know what they will be doing but then somehow, you know, they they can communicate to people in speaking and writing the way that only science students, only science students who have academic backgrounds could communicate, but not just you and, and, and everybody. <laughs> this is a huge challenge. Okay, so maybe we can have a look at um, our web page of this. <coughs> okay, so this is uh, physics. So um, me and my colleague Kasu are coordinating this. Um, so we there are two cycles. Um, the first one, and uh, we focus on design communication and storytelling. It's not really a nice title. And then the second one, and then communicating controversy or controversy in, in physics. And um, um, now, the difference is that we start from something psyche. Um, we start from something that student can handle better. Okay? And so, um, for example, in the first cycle, and they will have to talk about the development of physics, and that that has impact to the society or to people or, or whatever, and then they create a um, three three minutes block video. Okay, so this is very common. Okay, and then another thing that they will have to do is that they will have to write a 700 word popular science um, magazine article about the development, also about the development, okay, the development of a physics idea. And then, but then there are 10 angles for them to choose. Okay, for example, they can choose um, a Nobel Prize story, how how a scientist won a Nobel Prize and uh, discovering that physics concept or idea over a period of time. Or another angle of the popular science magazine article could be like how uh, uh, and how a new understanding of a physics concept leads to changes in other disciplines, things like that. Now, so it involves storytelling. Now, and, and and why storytelling? And we did a lot of research about that. And this is old and new because uh, if you do research, you know that all research projects are stories. 
Okay, so you start from background. The number of things happened, and then you ask questions, but something didn't really happen, and you get stuck. So, you did something, and then, but, but something also happened. So, something like that. And um, one of the things that at the meetings, um, mentioned very seriously by um, science people is that they want the student to know that engaging in science is actually something has a lot of storytelling elements. These are from the mouth of scientists, okay? And they want us to do it. They said that they, they, they can't. They just, every time they said it, they still look at them stories, okay, because they use this metaphor very often. Now, so we look at that and then we found that this is very, very, very common in postgraduate courses uh, uh, entitled sign communication everywhere, okay. So we thought that, well, so this is pretty possible because other people are all doing that. Okay, so Okay, now, um, so um, there are three strategies. The first strategy is that um, we had to work very closely with School of Science, okay? So we call it a needs analysis phase. And in order to make it really a genre-based course, we really need to understand the text types, okay? And finally, we identified text type like um, um, tech talk style or presentation and opet opinion editorial okay it's, it's something like a very serious scientific argumentative essay okay and then if you want me to redefine opet now opet is nothing new because in all uh, uh, news, um, I mean a lot of international newspapers or newspaper um, uh, everywhere might have the column say opinion pieces or opinion, okay? And so it's not exactly editorial because opinion of editorial so might post opposite opinions, okay? Um, uh, against the editorial's ideas, okay? So op-ed opinion editorials are basically opinion pieces, okay? That scientists write to disseminate very specific science information to the general public, okay? And then they will have to um, talk about the um, controversies of something. So this is the second written assignment that we want our students to do. The very first one is that they write a story telling the development of science which has impact to the society of certain people. Okay, so the second assignment builds up the skill that they have learned from the first one. And then the second speaking assignment is the uh, tech talk style or presentation. Then they turn the second written assignment to the, over -present to the presentation. And then the first one is the talking head three minutes video. Okay, telling a story about how physics can impact the world. Okay, and now all these things are authentic thing that if you, um, um, that people read on YouTube or no, and, and, and then when you browse thing and you hit here and there and then you get the, that, that's what people read and, and, and listen. Okay, now so the very first one, the strategy is that um, like what Hong Kong you people were doing and you have to, I think we have to uh, talk to top management of the, sc the school, and then we did talk to uh, associate dean of um, the School of Science, and also professors, and also course coordinators of uh, the science disciplines. And we also want them to give us examples of so-called science communication, 
Okay, I'm going to show you some example pretty soon. Okay, and the second one is that is is the huge challenge of our team, course development team, to really really to understand the the academic literacy and genre features of of pet opinion editorial. Okay, and then blog videos and uh, tech talk. We we know that using tech talk to teach very specific, for example, like capstone presentation, is not that appropriate. Okay, because uh, the target audience for tech talk basically is the general lay audiences rather than professor sitting there grading your capstone. Okay, so using tech talk for teaching sign communication is fine, we thought, okay? And so we, our team, you know, and I had to really um, understand the storytelling element, rhetorical. I become very far because I know that I only have five minutes. <laughs> and uh, the Einstein said, so when you communicate science, you need to keep the science, but not less simple. I mean, in his words, he said, oh, that's simple. So it, you should make it simple enough, make your science sharp, but not simpler. Then you take away the essential things. Now, this is very important, but as teacher, we don't teach students what to remove from their communication. We teach them strategy so that students will remove the unnecessary science things, okay? And there are strategies that we could teach rather than really understanding that. So, um, also with trichal devices that sign communication to use, okay, and then de different definition of storytelling elements and modes of technical terms and writing styles, different writing styles, and then ways of writing citation and of text references because that um, the styles are different, okay, and then we also kind of read real text of the. Uh, Genres. Oh, and then luckily at Hong Kong USC, we have our institutional popular science magazine that we disseminate to public libraries and secondary school and secondary school parents. And then the science professor at Hong Kong USC said, role models are there, okay? Make sure that your student can write better than these, okay? So it's very exciting that so we got. Uh, like this. Okay, so this is a story. Okay, stained glass, the history, the art, and science. Okay, so who wrote the article? Top students. Okay, and got invited or they submit to, to this. Okay, so please. So this one is about 700 words. It's about the development of something, the history. And in there, there are a lot of story Telling elements. So, in the, what they're saying that in the future works, they might be sales people selling some drugs or selling stained glass. But they have to tell people about the science, okay, of the special of the stained glass and why they why the color will fade because of the very specific chemicals that they use. Only they can do the job very well, okay. So, they in the future works, they will have to do a sort of science communication. Um, so, let's look at the third strategy, and we want like exactly what they did, and then we have to make sure that we uh, align the intended learning outcomes, um, learning activities, and assessment. So we started from assessment. We decided the first, the four assessment, and then we we make sure that our team, everybody, uh, the writers, the uh, course writers, understand the very beautiful. Metric view is beautiful, okay, and um, the beautiful uh, features of the genres, and then we shower uh, the teaching of the genre right from lesson one. So everything come together, and then at the beginning of each of the unit, we have the unit intended learning outcomes. And then hopefully, and we are able um, to make students care about the genre that they are learning. I think this is very important. Okay, if they care and then they will have the motivation. Um, the, so wrapping up, uh, I believe in genre approach of doing that. This is uh, 
an example of following this, okay? And then, so teachers and course developer, we really, really need to include faculty members and understand um, the features of the genres we hired. And that is nothing big, but then we, we, we did spend something like two years trying to understand and convince ourselves that this might be useful for a student. We're not sure. We're only into week seven. Um, we need your blessings. <laughs> okay, so I guess that's all I'm going to share. Thank you.